Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why are you making a Sekiro combat guide? The game's been out for years. The reason is simple. I think Sekiro has combat unlike any action game, and it can still confuse new players. Yes, I'm aware of the ultimate guide to combat fundamentals. The guide is fantastic and covers some very important parts of combat, especially on posture. You should watch it, but it's only part of the combat. It's missing the part that teaches you how to shove your sword into the enemy's face. I will go over my 5 rules of combat, how to practice combat, and then give you some tips at the end to help you some more. Let's get started. Don't spam the attack button. Your sword swings are based on the speed of your attack animation. No matter how fast you press, your sword swings won't come out any faster. Spamming can also queue up the next attack. You'll end up attacking again even though you stop pressing the button. By mashing your inputs earlier, it queued up another attack. Once your attack animation starts, there's nothing you can do. You're locked into your attack animation until it's finished, or until the enemy hits you and knocks you out of it. Once you're locked into the animation, you won't be able to do Kiri counter, jump, use prosthetic tools, or just dodging attacks. It's not that your reflexes are slow, it's because you literally cannot do anything until the attack animation is done. Pace out your button presses. 1, 2, 3. Control the urge to panic press the button or you might unintentionally attack and regret it. Okay, the last point isn't entirely true. There is a small window to cancel your attack by pressing the block, but it's best not to get overconfident. When you're learning, pretend you can't cancel out of it. Give yourself time to react by not spamming the button. You can parry attacks. So can the enemy. When the enemy parries your attack, it's the same sound and animation. The game is using parry to tell you it's their turn to attack, and that you should prepare to parry back. Not all enemies or bosses are capable of parrying, but it's still an important skill to learn. This is why you shouldn't spam the attack button. If an enemy parries your hit, and you continue to attack, your next attack is slower, leaving you open to counterattacks. Sometimes enemies can also break this rule. Instead of performing a parry against you, they might tank your attack and pull off a different move. This is also why you shouldn't spam your attack button, or you won't be able to react and deal with the unexpected changes. More on this later. Some enemies and bosses have really good defenses. They're always blocking and rarely are you able to do any direct damage to their health. This is where you pressure their posture and win by breaking it. As you attack, the enemy will block and their posture will go up until they parry your hit. This is your signal to parry back. Then you follow up with a few more strikes until they parry you again. It's a rapid exchange of blows back and forth to bring up an enemy's posture without damaging their health. You have to force enemies into this pattern with aggressive attacks. If you back off, they slowly recover their posture making the fight much longer. In order to be aggressive, you need to know how to be defensive. This is how you stick close and continue to pressure their posture. This is why people say Sekiro is a rhythm game. When you force the enemies to defend, it triggers this style of rhythm combat. But there are exceptions to the rules of course. Not all enemies require rhythm style combat. Some enemies are open to direct attacks to their HP. This style of combat is more like other action games. Some enemies will also occasionally block or parry your attacks. It's your job to learn their patterns. There's no one size fits all. No matter the style of combat, you should still parry whenever you can. Take a look at these two fights and compare the health and posture at the end of the fight. A posture heavy boss will still have tons of health left when you execute the death blow, while the more traditional boss fights end when their health is much lower.
so the combat is just attack aggressively, parry on the signal, and then continue to attack and you'll win, right? Well, no, it's never that simple. A lot of enemies and bosses have their own special attacks as well. You have to learn how to deal with these attacks, since countering them will offer a small window to strike at their health directly. This can come from following up with an attack after a Makiri counter, head jump, or just plain seeing an opening in their attacks. An enemy with less health will always have a harder time recovering their posture. Some enemy attacks can come without parry warning. This is another reason why you shouldn't spam the attack button. You have to be ready in case the enemy goes off script and does something completely unexpected. Sometimes the enemy can make mistakes and allow you to strike at their health, but it's unreliable. Countering their special attacks gives you a more reliable chance to strike at their health. Less health, harder to recover posture. I want to once again just emphasize that the combat style I just highlighted isn't the only combat style in the game. Some bosses and enemies are fought in a more traditional style where you find an opening and attack them directly. Or there are fights where you need to deflect multiple attacks before you can continue to strike back. In some fights, you might even find yourself playing more defensively than being aggressive. No matter the style, using a variation of what I just told you will get you through. How to trigger rhythm combat is what most players don't understand. Getting a good grasp of it isn't so simple. It takes practice. I have a few places for you to learn and practice this style of combat. First of all, I think Hanbei is terrible at teaching you the rhythm style combat. He's great at teaching you how to do certain moves, but to learn the flow of combat, you need some real enemies. I picked enemies that are very close to an idol, and they are usually isolated or don't have any hard enemies nearby that can interrupt your practice session. First guy is by the first idol at Ashina outskirts. It's the samurai with the hat. He's trickier than those without the hat. Use him to learn how to judge when an enemy has parried you and when you can parry back. His pattern is extremely simple, so you don't need to worry too much. The next guy is a short guy after the snake and before Gyobu at Ashina Castle Fortress Idol, so still pretty early in the game. He is directly behind the idol. He is a tougher enemy with more moves and attacks. Learn to see when he parries you and how to deal with his counterattack before striking back. The third guy is the blue robe samurai by the antechamber idol at Ashina Castle. A good tip is to not open that door until you feel that you've practiced enough. Opening the door could alert other enemies outside and ruin your practice. Learn how to read when you get carried and how to use Makiri counters. Force him into the rhythm combat pattern to break his posture. The last guy is found towards the middle or late game depending on which path you take. He's the lone ninja by Mibu Village. He's tough and will test your skills in keeping pressure on his posture while dealing with his attacks and special attacks. Just keep in mind when you're practicing, you're practicing how to read when to parry, how to control your button pressing, how to pressure an enemy's posture, and how to counter unexpected attacks. You're not just there to learn their patterns. Learning their patterns will definitely help you in fighting these specific enemies, but it won't help you against others. Here are some combat tips to help you deal with things that I couldn't fit into the combat rules. You can apply them to any combat situation. This first tip has been repeated several times in this guide, but I will mention it again. You know how when you're practicing Mikiri counter with Hanbei, it's so easy to do, but in an actual fight, it's never as reliable? It's not just Mikiri, but any of your moves seems to be harder to do. When you're practicing with Hanbei, you always know it's coming. In an actual fight, you never know when the enemy will use it. When you're practicing with Hanbei, you're not pressing other buttons. In an actual fight, you might be in the middle of doing other moves. This is why it's easier when you're practicing against Hanbei. This is why you shouldn't spam your moves. This is why I wanted you to practice in real fights. Don't stress too much about your posture. Yes, being posture broken can lead to death. But from my personal experience and watching new players play this game, more often than not, death is a result of getting hit and not knowing how to deal with certain moves 
rather than getting hit as a result of being posture broken. A lot of new players will back off to recover their posture, giving the enemy more breathing room instead of pressuring the boss with more attacks. Hesitation is defeat. Hesitate. Defeat. Hesitate. Defeat. Hesitate. Defeat. You hesitate, they are defeated. Don't be afraid to stand your ground and watch their next move. Sometimes it might be bad timing where you don't have quite enough time to execute the next strike. Rather than risk getting hit, stop and let the enemy do their move. There's a difference between backing away for no reason versus stopping for a second to anticipate the next move. This is easier said than done, so it takes practice. If you're going to spam a button, spam the block button instead. The animation is very quick and you might even land a parry. Even if you don't land a parry and just block, you're still taking no damage. I know you lose parry frames the more you spam block, but who cares? I'd rather you learn by spamming than struggle with the timing. Don't try to chase enemies that move too quickly. Stand your ground and let them come to you. Fight them on your terms. Be mindful of your positioning. The camera can be annoying. Sometimes this can't be helped, but try to be aware of your position. When you move backwards but the camera doesn't move backward, that means it hit the wall. Try to get a feel for that and know when to reposition if needed. I know it's not always easy when some of the arenas are so confined. Just try your best. Practice, practice, practice. Just because you watch this video isn't going to instantly make you a Sekiro master. There's a lot of information to take in. Watch it a few times if you need it. You might find something you missed the first time or had forgotten about. I'm going to leave it off here. I want to say that about covers it for the combat, but I'm sure there's more I can talk about. I wanted to cover what I think is the most important part of the combat and not overwhelm you with too much information. Just to reiterate the 5 rules, don't spam the attack button, learn to identify when the enemy has parried you, trigger rhythm combat by forcing the enemy to block and parry your hits to bring up their posture. Learn to deal with an enemy's special attack, and lastly, the game has more than one combat style. It's your job to figure it out. Good luck, you got this.